As a seminary student, you have come across the story of Ibrahim السلام, through several different sources. And in all these various episodes and instances from his life, which one do you relate to the most? Which one like, do you really connect with? We know Ibrahim from a, from a, from a young age as a kid. Uh, he was already had firm, you know, he had yaqeen and he, he already had his obedience to, to Allah. I wouldn't say it's one incident in specific. It's more so just that consistent uh, trust in Allah. I guess like for lack of a better term, climactic point of when he's about to be thrown into the fire. And it's amazing because you have Ibrahim alayhi salam, he's been preaching to his people for so many years. By the end of it, there's no one who's following him. His father is not only rejecting his message, but he's ready to stone him to death, removing him from his house. What the people do is that they build this huge fire, they, they get this ditch dug, and they put you know a lot of firewood in there. And it's become like a, a town activity where everyone's getting firewood to put in this ditch and you can't throw him into the fire. He's catapulted into the fire. And you could imagine he's looking around, scanning the entire area, seeing all these people. There's not a single person who is there to support him. And so he's, he's you know, in this catapult, he's feeling lonely. Okay, my, my town is against me. It's okay, Allah is with me. You know, my father is against me. It's okay, Allah is with me. You know, step by step, he's always just, alayhi salam, he has that yaqeen and that trust and that, that husn al of like, Allah wants good for me. But for him, Allah is enough. And so when he's being catapulted, he says, Hasbi Allah wa wakil. He was a very, very intelligent, clever uh, man, but also he was a very intelligent and clever boy as well, right? From a very young age, he looks at the sun and the stars and the moon, and he says, you know, maybe I should follow that. But then he concludes and he says, you know what, like, rationally, Allah is the only one to follow. I think what this shows is just his absolute devotion to Allah. Right. And then once he arrives at that conclusion, it's so easy for him to take on these these daunting tasks of uh, of, of sacrificing his son or leaving his wife and his kid in the middle of, of nowhere. At that moment, the test for Ibrahim السلام, was that loneliness, that Allah is sufficient for me and he is the best disposer of my affairs. And it's not like he's sitting there and saying, you know, Allah, why me? You know, Allah, why is this happening to me? And, you know, I could have left and you could have warned me and you could have sent an angel and destroyed. It's rather just like, you know, he trusts that Allah is going to take care of him. Allah removed the mushrikeen from around them. Allah also caused the fire to be subdued for Prophet Ibrahim salam. When everything feels against you, when everything feels like it's piling up on you, then it's uh, that like, you know, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Allah wants good for you. Allah is there, He's going to protect you. That statement of Hasbunallah wa na'am al wakil is an expression that we should all live by. And especially for me in my, in my life, you know, we all go through trials and tribulations. We all have a fire in our lives, a big test for us every single day. And we should be going through those tests just like how Ibrahim Ali Islam went through his tests. It's easy to look back to Ibrahim's life and say like, you know what, like when Allah told Ibrahim to do something, it was instant, it was, it was a snap of a finger. And it's tough when a command comes to you, whether it's from uh, the Quran or the Sunnah, and you struggle a bit to follow it immediately, right? There's a little bit of, oh, is it, you know, should I, is it, is it worth it? Or, you know, maybe I can do it later in life. Am I being too strict? Till the end, do as much a'mal as you can. Make dua to Allah. Ibrahim A.S. to the very end, he was making dua to Allah. That trust and that yaqeen and that trust in Allah. Say, for example, uh, somehow you were to run into Ibrahim A.S. How would you react? Ooh. I mean, I think the first thing that would happen would, um, I just fall on down in admiration. I mean, Here's a man who, out of the billions of people who have lived on this earth, he's the top five. He's the top five. You know, we talk about the top five billionaires. He's the top five people to ever live in this world. I'd be very intimidated. <laughs> um, like I said, he was a very, very uh, intelligent man, right? And, and we, see, we see that throughout his life as well. And I think when Allah calls him an ummah, I really want to ask him, how were you able to build such a strong and unwavering community? I think the most realistic answer is I would just stand there in awe for like hours on end. Mm -hmm. And I'd ask him like, how'd you do it, right? What are some, what are some, some, some core things that we have to focus on as a community and, and really as humanity to have this devotion and commitment and absolute dedication to Allah that you were able to instill into, into your family? Like if I, mustered the the courage to even ask anything it would be like tell me your story i want to sit with you and just listen to you for hours on end how did you always 
turn back and just immediately trust in Allah. Like just سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا over and over and over again. Alright, say in that meeting he, he, he were to ask you that, you know, you have read my story in the Qur'an, uh, you know of all the uh, struggles and difficulties and sacrifices that I went through. Uh, at what moment did you understand like the essence and reality of sacrifice? So I, I think one of the sacrifices that I made that were pretty big for me was uh, joining seminary. Um, see, now I was going to college and uh, I had a pretty heavy course load. To join seminary seemed like such a daunting idea. You know, sacrificing five hours at least every single day to come to seminary. And so I kind of like put, you know, put the idea to the side because it just seemed illogical. It just didn't seem possible. And so, you know, um, all this guilt and, and reading all these things, I just decided that, you know, let me just come to class for one week, just try it out. And I'm not going to join as a student, just come for one week, see how it goes, yeah. go to college afterwards, see how that balances. And, you know, wallahi, when I joined seminary, I came not just that week, but the following week, and the following, I just stayed in seminary. You know, joining seminary, I did not lose anything from the dunya. I saw so many doors open for me that I couldn't even imagine. There was a point in time where I, where I decided that, okay, for the sake of Allah, I'm going to change the people who I surround myself with. Uh, you, you become who you are surrounded by, right? So that at the time felt like a big sacrifice because people you become attached to, especially through how long I knew them, yeah. it's like, you know, these are my friends, you know, the homies. Yeah. But is like something that I could call a sacrifice, but looking in retrospect, it, it really wasn't a sacrifice at all. It was rather just something that like doing it allowed another door to open. I guess just on that note, whenever anything that like to me felt like this is such a big thing that's being asked of me or I don't know what's going to come out of this, it feels like Allah SWT just went like, okay, this is your problem. Look over there, there's a door that's open. Just walk through there, you're chilling. In my senior year of college, an internship uh, offer was, was given to me. And I realized that if I take this internship on top of my regular classes at college and on top of my seminary classes uh, in the morning, I would have to sacrifice something, right? And that if I do make the decision to accept this internship, it would be great, right? Because if you get an internship, your best entry level experience into, into the career. Uh, and so I realized that I do not want to give up seminary. Uh, there is immense barakah, there is immense knowledge and blessings that I personally have, have received from it. Uh, and I will say no to this. And I know that Allah knows I'm giving this up mm -hmm. and that in the future He will. Uh, repay it, maybe in a way that I don't know, but I know for sure he will. It will open up other doors. 100%. Yep. We make these small sacrifices compared to Ibrahim alayhi salam sacrifice, this is nothing. But the reward we get from Allah, it's illogical, it doesn't make sense. How could there be such a big reward for such a small sacrifice? <laughs> Yeah, Shari Kalak.